fields are parched and the trees are felled to the rocks cry aloud on their own if the if the fields are parched and the trees are felled will the rocks cry aloud on their own if the birds are starved and the beasts are killed will the bones in the dust lift a song have mercy As the oceans rise and the wells run dry, do we care if disaster is near? If our children starve, will they cry to God? Will they curse us for closing our ears? And the earth will be perfect again No more greed or war No more tooth and claw For the wolf and the lamb will be friends Have mercy, Lord Have mercy, Lord Forgive our broken ways be using a different camera this evening for our service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now, and forever. Amen. We say together the first of our canticles, the song of praise. God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. 
Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth will bring forth its increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. You, O God, will bless us, and all the ends of the earth will fear you. The day is now past. The night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. We pause in the time of silence for reflection and quietening our souls before God. Father of lights, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The psalm for this evening is Psalm 73. And we'll say it by alternate verses. Just need to get a couple of things organised here. Getting used to using a, a different camera. Psalm 73. God is indeed good to Israel, to those whose hearts are pure. Nevertheless, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was filled with envy at the boastful when I saw the ungodly had such tranquility. For they suffer no pain and their bodies are hale and fat. They come to no misfortune like other folk. Nor are they plagued as others are. Therefore they put us in pride as a necklace and clothe themselves in violence as in the garment. Their eyes shine from folds of fatness, and they have all that their hearts would wish. Their talk is malice and mockery, and they hand down slanders from my eyes. Just check on the screen, John. The, uh, yes. Their mouths blaspheme against heaven, and their tongues go to and fro on earth. Therefore my people turn to them, and find in them no fault. They say, how can God know? Is there understanding in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly, yet they prosper in the riches. Was it for nothing that I cleansed my heart, and washed my hands in innocence? I would strip all the day long and rebuked every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, I should have betrayed the family of your children. Then I thought to understand this, but it was too hard for me. Till I went into the sanctuary of God, and then I understand what their end will be. For you set them to places and filled them to their churches. How suddenly they are laid waste. They come to an end, they perish in terror. As with a dream when one awakes, so when you are yourself. When my heart was soured, and I was wounded to the core. I was but brutish and ignorant, no better than a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am always with you, for you hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards you will lead me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is no one upon earth that I desire with in comparison with you. Though my flesh and my heart fail me, you, O oh God, are my portion forever. 
Behold, those who forsake you shall perish, and all who whore after other gods you will destroy. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have made the Lord my refuge, and I will tell what you have done. God of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to the reading from 1 Maccabees chapter 4, verses 1 to 36. Now Georgius took 5,000 infantry and 1,000 picked cavalry, and this division moved out by night to fall upon the camp of the Jews and attack them suddenly. Men from the citadel were their guides, but Judas heard of it, and he and his warriors moved out to attack the king's forces at Emmaus, while the division was still absent from the camp. When Georgius entered the camp of Judas by night, he found no one there. So he looked for them in the hills because he said, these men are running away from us. At daybreak, Judas appeared in the plain with 3,000 men, but they did not have armor and swords such as they desired. And they saw the camp of the Gentiles strong and fortified with cavalry all around it. And these men were trained in war. But Judas said to those who were with him, do not fear their, num their numbers or be afraid when they charge. Remember how your ancestors were saved at the Red Sea when Pharaoh with his forces pursued them. And now let us cry to heaven to see whether he will favor us with, and remember his covenant with our ancestors and crush this army before us today. When all the Gentiles will know that there is one who redeems and saves Israel. When the, when the foreigners looked up and saw them coming against them, they went out from their camp and to battle. Then the men with Judas blew their trumpets and engaged in battle. The Gentiles were crushed and fled into the plain, and all those in the rear fell by the sword. They pursued them to Gezara, and to the plains of Idumea, and to Aztos, and Jamina, and three thousand of them fell. Then Judas and his force turned back from pursuing them, and he said to the people, Do not be greedy for plunder, for there is a battle before us. Georgius and his force are near us in the hills, but stand now against our enemies and fight them, and afterwards seize the plunder boldly. Just as Judas was f uh, finishing his speech, a detachment appeared coming out of the hills. They saw that their army had been put to flight and that the Jews were burning the camp for the smoke was seen that was seen showed what was ha had happened. When they perceived this, they were greatly frightened and when they also saw the army of Judas drawn up in the plain for battle, they all fled into the land of the Philistines. Then Judas returned to plunder the camp, and they seized a great amount of gold and silver and cloth dyed blue and sea purple and great riches. On their return they sang hymns and praises to heaven, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Thus Israel had a great deliverance that day. Those of the foreigners who escaped went and reported to Lysias all that had happened. When he heard it, he was perplexed and discouraged, for things had not happened to Israel as he had intended, nor had they turned out as the king had ordered. But the next year he mustered 60,000 picked infantry and 5,000 cavalry to subdue them. They came into Idumea and encamped at beth -zur, and Judas met them with 10,000 men. When he saw that their army was strong, he prayed, saying, Blessed are you, O Saviour of Israel, who crushed the attack of the mighty warrior by the hand of your servant David, 
and gave the camp of the Philistines into the hands of Jonathan, son of Saul, and of the man who carried his armor. Him in this army by the hand of your people Israel, and let them be ashamed as their troops and their cavalry, ashamed of their troops and their cavalry. Fill them with cowardice, melt them, melt the boldness of their strength, let them tremble in their destruction. Strike them down with the sword of those who love you, and let all who know your name praise you with hymns. Then both sides attacked, and there fell of the army of Lysias 5,000 men. They fell in action. Then Lysias saw the rout of his troops and observed the boldness that inspired those of Judas, and how ready they were either to live or to die nobly. He withdrew to Antioch and enlisted mercenaries in order to invade Judea again with an even larger army. Then Judas and his brothers said, See, our enemies are crushed. Let us go up to cleanse the sanctuary and dedicate it. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John's going to read for us now from Colossians. The second reading tonight is St. Paul's Epistles to the Colossians, chapter 1, commencing at verse 21. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continually securely, that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my suffering for your sake, and in my flesh, I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I have become its servant according to God's commission that was given to me to you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles were the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ to you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaimed, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil and struggle with all the energy that he powerfully inspires within us. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Thanks very much, John. We come now to the second of our canticles, the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour, who has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. The Lord has shown strength with his arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel 
to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Today in our prayers we remember Jerome, priest and biblical scholar. We have an image of Jerome. One of the stories about Jerome is of removing a thorn from a lion's paw and that's why we see uh, the lion there on the side. Uh, Jerome was a biblical scholar. It was Jerome who translated the uh, scriptures into Latin and it's, so he is the author of the, the Vulgate, the, the Latin copy of the scriptures which was standardized for many centuries uh, within the Western Church. And uh, there are a number of sayings that are attributed to Jerome. Uh, one famous one is, good, better, best, never let it rest till your good is better and your better best. You probably have heard that but not realised that it's from Jerome. And then uh, here's a number of others. True friendship ought never to conceal what it thinks. Catch then, O oh, catch the transient hour, improve each moment as it flies. The line often adopted by strong men in controversy of justifying the means by the end. How true that is. The friendship that can cease has never been real. Marriage is good for those who are afraid to sleep alone at night. Maybe that's my trouble. Early impressions are hard to eradicate from the mind. When once wool has been dyed purple, who can restore it to its previous whiteness? Why do you not practice what you preach? So there are some of the sayings that are attributed to Jerome, a priest and biblical scholar who died in 420. So we pray. O oh God, whose blessed son became poor so that we might through his poverty become rich. Deliver us from an inordinate love of this world so that, inspired by the devotion of your servant Jerome, may we, we may serve you with singleness of heart and attain to the riches of the age to come through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for the week following the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant us such a measure of your grace that, running in the way of your commandments, we may obtain your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on this last day of September, our sharing with the Bush Church Aid family is a prayer for the Intercontinental Church Society. The chaplaincies anticipate a gradual resumption of on-site services and they're centred at Coventry in the United Kingdom and of course uh, that anticipation is diminished with the need for lockdown. So, loving God, we uphold you, our brothers and sisters in Christ who serve you in the United Kingdom, for the various ministries that are transformed and restricted because of the, the 
resurgence of COVID-19 in that country and so many places. We uphold to you the work of the Intercontinental Church Society and pray your blessing on them. Amen. And then now prayers for the Anglican Communion. We today uh, pray for the Diocese of Chester in England. We uphold to you, Father, the Diocese of Chester, Peter Forster, their bishop. We pray for him in his leadership, for the clergy and people as they serve you in that part of England. We also pray for the Episcopal Church of Pennsylvania in the United States, for Daniel, Daniel Gutierrez, their, their bishop, for the clergy and people of that diocese. Help them in the challenges uh, before them as they respond to the needs of the community and celebrate your love and goodness. In our own diocese, we uphold to you the parish of Braby Island. We pray for Stephen Schwartzrock, a parish priest, for the retired clergy there, Bishop Bruce Clark, Marilyn Cullen, Carolyn Payne, Jim Tate, and Barry Shield. For your people as they serve you there, mindful of the great many retirees that make up that community and indeed the congregation at St. Peter's Bribe Island. We also pray, Father, for the work of Queensland Churches Together, that opening up of dialogue and effort in the life of our nation, our state, and we pray that there would be ongoing dialogue and working together in the different parts of the body of Christ. We pray, Father, for our brothers and sisters in Christ to serve you in the local Baptist congregation. We pray for Dave Paros, their pastor, and ask your grace and blessing on them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We uphold to you, Father, uh, those who come to this night in the midst of difficulty and uncertainty, uh, those who are uncertain about employment, uh, those who are struggling with the need to uh, search for a different kind of employment. We are mindful of the many thousands in the airline industry who are without work. We uphold them to you as they ponder and work through the changes in their lives. We rejoice in the greater opportunities and freedoms to travel within Queensland, within Australia. And so we pray for an opening up of uh, the work of the airlines, that there will be greater movement of people around the country in a COVID safe way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those working in the transport industry, particularly those who work in, on, in trucks, uh, transporting goods, just, not just locally, but interstate. We give thanks to you for their labours and all they contribute to our community. We pray for them, their safety and well-being and for their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray uh, the evening collect for Wednesday evening. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. May our Lord Jesus Christ and God our Father comfort our hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Amen. 
That brings us to the close of our service. We thank you for joining with us tonight and look forward to you joining us again tomorrow evening as we gather to spend time with God in prayer and scripture reading. I bid you good night and God bless. Stay.